Power du Francais. That is right, my friends. The Bulls showed out in Paris as they beat the Detroit Pistons 126 to 108. They are now only three games below 500, but we are not here to put any yuck in the yum because it was a really fun trip in Europe, in Paris for the Chicago Bulls. And we're breaking it down here on the Sports Cubicle. It's the Marvelous One, Dan Marver, Devin Single, Paul Shabari, and myself, Mike Mercado. And Marvelous One, the Bulls, again, the most streakiest team in the NBA. They beat the best teams. They lose to the worst teams. And then, of course, they, they're they representing. We're all scared. Oh, man, they're going to be the game of the week. Oh, man, they're going to the international game. Oh, man, like they have a winning streak against Detroit. And sure enough, they like do their job. So the most frustrating, the most inconsistent team in the NBA and the Chicago Bulls, your thoughts on what, what would seem to be a really cool trip and a really awesome, this team represented themselves very well in, in Paris on and off the court, your thoughts on this trip for the Chicago Bulls. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, they're, they're one know in Europe and maybe they should join the Euro league. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> that was my concern. They played well against, the good teams and poorly against the bad teams. And I would put Detroit in the latter category. So I was a little worried about this game, but they did show up and it looks like um, the, uh, our center has, has blossomed in the absence of the Rosen, Vukovic. So that's been very helpful. Obviously he's, he's picked up his three point shooting and, his, and he's actually shown an inside game, which I've always asked that he do more of. So that's been wonderful. Now, you know, uh, the way that ultimately you want to have the team make the playoffs, and because the playoffs are so expanded, that's, that's actually a very strong possibility if they can keep winning. So it was, it was good to see them, you know, focused on, highlighted for those people that were home at two o'clock on a Thursday, which I guess a lot of people work from home now. So it was more now than it was before the pandemic. But uh, that was a good, good showing. And uh, hopefully they can keep going against the Hawks and the others that they'll be playing down the road. And we have an inside source who was at that Bulls game because a uh, shout out to my uncle Jeff Enriquez and his wife, Carla Enriquez. They were in uh, Paris. They actually did uh, a European trip and they were able to see that game and they saw some awesome stars and the NBA does it right. We were talking in a other segment about the Bears not doing a great job in honoring their history and their tradition. The NBA is a total opposite. The NBA is all in always about their former players, their current players. They love to promote and hype up their league. And it's something I do really appreciate and love both from David Stern and Adam Silver and the league's player associations that they really focus on the players and the, the, the greatness of the game, whether it's not the game you enjoy watching in the sense of like, if you're from the generation of the bird and, and magic or the Jordan or the Kobe Every generation evolves into its version of it, but they fall in love with it. Kids love Steph Curry. Kids love Luka and Trey Young. And I think the NBA does a great job of that. And the Bulls being such an international team and having such a brand because of Michael was so cool to see that kind of play out. But Marvelous, you brought up the, the standings. You brought up the playoffs. And it's the top 10 teams make it. You got the play in and whatnot. But you're looking at the Celtics at one, the Bucks at two, the Sixers at three, the Nets at four, the Cavs at five, the Heat at six, the Knicks at seven, the Hawks at eight, the Pacers at nine, and at number 10 is your 21 and 24 Chicago Bulls. They are two games behind the ninth seed. So I think if you look at the rest of the NBA, I, they're better than Toronto. They're better than Washington. They're better than the Magic, the Hornets, and the Pistons, who are currently uh, in a battle with the Hornets to get Victor and Minyaba. But I do think the Bulls won't make the play at the very least. It's a shame that we're even having this conversation because they do have a lot of talent on this team. Then they are missing Lonzo, and it shouldn't be this this way, but the East is, is stacked, right, Marvelous? Absolutely. It was good that Lonzo was in the team picture in Paris. That, that gave us some hope that he'll come back someday from, from this mysteriously lingering injury that uh, <laughs> that that is almost beyond belief to the, the amount of time that's involved. It's uh, quite puzzling to me, but we hopefully he'll be back and we'll be at full strength. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we did make the playoffs last year and it was a, a, a short run and uh, maybe the play-in game will be good for them. They'll get, you know, they'll get a, a, a few, few games in, win a series and then play one of the top teams. So uh, maybe this will be a good thing. Yeah, I, I think that the thoughts of them tanking and trying to get the number one pick that's been blown out the window, it's just too good of a team. It's too hard to move these guys. You and I have talked about it, and 
you know, yeah, it's the expiring contract of Vucevic and DeMar's a great two. And does somebody want to take a, a swing on Zach, even though he earned that max contract? Did you have to be the team that paid him? All these are, are, are you know, really relevant questions. And they're questions that should be asked. But I do think that this is a team that's going to play themselves into a 10, 9, 8 seed. And they're going to get themselves into a proper series. But we'll see what happens with Lonzo. And I think you and I are still on the same belief. We both predicted he wouldn't play in 2022 and he wouldn't play before the all-star game. I'm still pretty adamant. He's not going to play this season, but we'll see how much that changes his team. But marvelous. I think that's where we're, we're leaving on this. Your grades. I talked about it on last week's episode. The, uh, the athletic had a report on and a, a mid season grade for the Chicago bulls. And basically they got to see, the inconsistency, the weirdness of Billy Donovan's contract coming out of nowhere and the infighting and then the ups and the downs. I think they're a C-minus team right now. I think they're an underachieving team. I think they're a team that does have a very low ceiling, but a team that can be entertaining and is entertaining when they want to be. So before we let you go, what are your, your midseason grades on our Chicago Bulls after this Paris trip? I'm going to be a very optimistic with a C-minus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. So low, but it's... It, it, they're, they're a little bit below uh, expectations, and maybe they, their expectations were too high because of their start last year. And uh, they, they've been, like we've been talking about, they, they rise to the occasion and beat them in Milwaukee and Boston, and then they lose to Oklahoma City. You know, in Houston, it was a, an amazing number of points they give up in these, in these crazy games. So uh, too inconsistent, and, but they still have – uh, when everybody's healthy, a big three for scoring, which is, is pretty important in the in the NBA. So hopefully that can carry them uh, to the playoffs and maybe win a series or two. That would be fun, my friend. It'd be it'd be great for us because then we could just dish more on the association, which we love doing. And on that note, we want to thank you guys so much for enjoying this Bulls trip. I think seeing Bulls fans be so great and traveling with the team and tweeting about them and interacting with them on social media and then old Bulls greats like Luol, Luol Deng and Joe Keem. And then obviously Magic was there. And, you know, it was, it was really cool. And I think David Hall had this great idea next year, even though Michael won't make the trip, make it Bulls and Hornets and imagine the Chicago Bulls over there and Michael Jordan having to do ambassador work. That would be really cool in itself. But with that, we want to know your thoughts. What do you think about the Chicago Bulls after this Paris trip? We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver, Devin Single, Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado.